Okay, so welcome to, to Wednesday's Clearing. Today's topic is gratitude for the wonders of the world. Right? Right. Okay, so what does that mean, gratitude for the wonders of the world? You know, I hear a lot of people saying a lot like, you know, life is painful, life sucks, the world is, you know, a bad place, the world is suffering. It's not the world, we know that, that's in suffering, it's humanity. The world itself is an awesome, awesome, incredible place. It's the human beings that create the energy that we feel on the planet. And it's also human beings that create the incredible heart openings, but also the incredible shutting down and blocking of the heart that, that inhibits one's ability to really experience the beauty and the wonders that are here. I know in my own life, on my own journey, I've experienced many times of not wanting to be here, but it was never about the world. I always thought, wow, this is such an incredible place to be in physicality, and yet the emotional pain that I would have experienced, as well as I know that a lot of other people do as well, that's what causes the suffering and the feeling like they don't want to be here. And yet we make it about the world, as though it's the world, okay? And yet the incredibleness of this planet is astounding. So because people believe or somehow associate the world with their own suffering and how that affects their ability to really open, then what we want to do is help to unravel some of these beliefs, some of these structures, some of these energies that have literally been created inside the physical body as well as the energy of the heart that's um, protected. And in doing so, what it does is it allows people to start to understand, oh, it's my pain that I'm feeling that's causing me to feel like I, this is an, an unpleasant place, when in fact, the world itself is an absolutely incredible place. I mean, look at all the fall colors that are happening right now. I mean, just that alone is astounding, you know? And yet, even in that, there are people and I'm not talking everybody, but there are a lot of people who can see the beauty and they can in some ways appreciate it and feel a sense of awe and wonder, and yet it's not all the way. Do you know what I'm talking about? That, you know, you can feel that, oh, there's oh, just a little bit more and I could just feel this incredible expansion of love and connection and oneness. And that's what we're really after in our, in our world, in our lives, with our own selves, is for the heart to be open all the way. In that, we find our own, you know, that sense of liberation, that sense of honest and, and appreciation and love for all that really is. So, I just want to speak a little bit about how do we get to a place in our world, in our lives, where we don't have that full heart opening, where we can feel like a little membrane or maybe just a little hold back or maybe a little barrier and for some a complete blockage where we can't really feel this gratitude. You know, this is the, this is the month for gratitude. You know, Thanksgiving is a month for gratitude. And, you know, people, most everyone really does want to have the, the gratitude for all that they have. So a lot of times I hear people speaking and they'll, they'll speak about gratitude or they'll be sharing their gratitude and, and their thanks and yet I'm watching the energy in their, in their, in their body and energy field and I can see very clearly that they're, that they're not fully open. Not that they don't want to be because the, the desire is to be 100% open. And the blockages, the stuff in the way, you know, the, the, the suffering that has caused one to hide the heart or hide who they really are. So how, how do we get there, you know? So a lot of people you know, want to believe in, okay, we just have this lifetime and this is it and this is all there is. In my world, because of what I've seen and what I track, I know unequivocally, without a doubt, your soul has many incarnational experiences, hundreds and hundreds of incarnational experiences. So what you experience in this particular lifetime is not the beginning of your soul's journey. What you have gathered and what you have pulled forth from all of the lifetimes, all of your experiences, not just on planet Earth, but in other time and space dimension, you have also gathered evidence on why it's not safe or why you need to protect the heart, 
or why you need to close down or why you can't trust or why you can't really feel the gratitude of the beauty and exquisiteness of this planet. It doesn't start here, it comes from your experiences, your journey as a soul. What we're going to be doing in the unraveling today, because things start to present as soon as I start talking about our topic. So immediately as I, you know, we're talking about gratitude, but it's the gratitude for the wonders of the world. And the moment I'm accessing your energy field and the, the energies inside of each of you, I already begin to see lines of energy, lines of, when I say lines, what I mean by that is what's presenting in your energy field are energies coming from past that comes into the physical body that you've carried forth in your soul imprint that are contributing to the blocking, they're contributing to the, the inability to just really just go, whoa, let's just open the heart and love because we have that, we have that, we are that. Okay, and yet how many people really experience that? We might have moments of experiencing that sometimes through things like falling in love, things like having a baby, you experience that incredible heart opening, um, different, different times, even getting married, there's just times when the heart really does open and yet it doesn't stay open. Do you know what I mean? It's like you have these incredible experiences and then you kind of get back into your life and it goes back to that little bit of blockage or inhibition or uh, covering up that heart center. So as I'm tracking, I'm watching the energy and literally <coughs> what I'm watching in everybody's body, different and yet the same, is the line of energy that comes from the past and in that I'm literally watching how it's a black line of blackness, a black line of energy. Okay, all that's showing me is that it's your, what's happened is you've carried forth the pain, the, the betrayals, the, uh, the judgments, the, the, the losses, the death, the intensities that one has experienced throughout their soul's evolution that stayed, that stayed with the soul imprint. What I mean by that is when you have, let's just say for example, Let's just say, hang on a second. Let's just say that in a, in a past, <clears throat> in, a, in a past incarnational experience that you ex at literally experienced a, a massive betrayal of your own people in a clan where you were basically ostracized, left to die. And because once you're ostracized, especially in so certain time periods of the, of earth, um, that meant starvation, that meant um, death for sure. It might be slow, but, it, but somehow. And so that betrayal is still deeply, deeply ingrained in the soul imprint and was never released, meaning that the trauma of that experience, the horror of that experience, the sadness, the grief of that experience was not released. The energy of that was not released. So it got carried forward and into the next incarnation. And with the energy that we have of something like that, when you come into the world, you're not gonna feel liberated, you're gonna feel the constriction of the past. Just like now, your subconscious, your, your childhood issues, whatever, are still with you until you unravel and clear the energies of those, same only different. So you come into this world, or the next world, or next lifetime, and you're already carrying forth that energy. So when I'm talking about seeing that, then there's that lifetime, there's that black line of energy that literally comes with you. And as you step into this world as an infant, yes, you have the first experiences, and yet this other energy starts to come into your subconscious and it begins to attract energy to you to recreate the same kind of feeling. But that's doing that so that you can unravel it. We don't have those teachings, so we just gather more evidence why it's not safe, why we gotta protect the heart, why we can't open up and be seen and witnessed and let our love shine forth. So we gather more evidence again, and then you've got more lifetimes of the same kind of thing. Maybe not quite as intense, but there will be lifetimes where it will be as intense or more intense because you're trying to unravel it. You're trying to release this trauma, shock energy from your energy field. So as I'm watching everybody's energy, I can literally see a lot of where there's been lots of clearing, lots of trans transformation and healing, and yet there's still something inside where 
the energy is still inhibiting and blocking the heart from just totally be, being open. And in that state of openness, there's also what I would, what I would call like a state of, it's like a being in a state of liberation. When your heart is open, you're no longer in a state of judging others. You're not finding fault with others. You're not finding what's wrong. You're just experiencing a state of peace and also you're experiencing a state of love. I'm not talking love like, oh baby, oh baby, you know, or like your infant or your child or your friends. It's a state of, of oneness. It's a state of love that doesn't make anybody different no matter the color of their skin or their cultures or their beliefs or who they are. It's just a state of, of connection, oneness. In that, you're free and liberated from all the mind thoughts, the judgments, the things that, you know, that we're always finding fault with the world or the people of the world. So in this clearing, we're going to start unraveling at that level. That means we're going to be doing some good stuff into the, that particular vein of energy that I literally see that, that tracks and comes forward into your life stream. And then also back into the lifetimes where this energies began and start unraveling at that level, at that place of really, you know, long, long, long ago where things really began. Because as you know, if we get to the seed and pull the seed, everything changes. If we don't, then, you know, yeah, it feels good for a bit, but things come back. So for me, it's always about, let's find where this all began and unravel from there, rather than from, you know, the leaves on the tree. I've talked about the leaves on the tree before, meaning that, you know, when you look at the tree, you find it started off as this little seed, and that seed grew into the trunk of the tree that also grew into the limbs of the tree that grew into the branches of the tree, and then also began to have the, the little twigs that also have the leaves, and the leaves are all the different pieces. You know, there's our fears and our worries and all the stuff that has to do with judgments and finding fault and all the different things of the, you know, of our lives, and yet, without finding the core, we're just going to be dealing with a bunch of leaves on the tree. And yes, things do get better. And if we really want to change, then we got to go deep. So when you really look at life and you really feel into your gratitude for the wonders of the world, like I'm looking out this window and I can see these like gold yellow leaves on the trees. And I've seen these exquisite oranges and reds and, you know, just incredible colors. So when you see those, how much can you just let yourself feel the gratitude at the beauty here? And are you really aware of how open your heart is? Are you fully aware of any constraints, any holding back, any place inside where you can feel, yes, I, I can feel that, but I can still feel just a slight, slight, slight holding back, or, or I, no matter what I, how try, hard I try, I can't really fully blow open the heart center, okay? so. That's because of the things in the way. It has nothing to do with the world. It has nothing to do with what you've lived here and your experiences and the traumas and shock. It has to do with what you've collected through lifetimes and lifetimes and lifetimes of traumatic experiences that are blocking the heart. Okay? I mean, I've, in my world, I've been doing this work for a long time, over 30 years. I have seen the depths of despair, I have seen where it comes from, but I also know how to clear it, okay? So what's going to happen today is I'm going to have you light up things for me. What I mean by that is to light something up, what happens in your energy field? Like if you just say to me, okay, well, yeah, I can feel where my heart's a little, I don't have it all the way open. When you tell me that, what presents is a bunch of energy, static energy all over the place means nothing. It means I have to work really hard to find it. I'm not willing to do that. So what I, what I need from you is to feel into how it makes you feel. For example, let's just use the trees again because that's an easy one. So when you see the trees and you see the beauty that's transforming and changing, the, you know, the beautiful falls colors, meaning we're going into winter, losing the leaves. But the beauty of that, when you look at that, when you feel into the feeling, the sensation of gratitude, or the feeling of awe, the awe of the incredibleness here, when you feel anything that isn't like fully blown open to where it brings tears to your eyes because it's such an incredible experience to feel the heart open, if you're not having that experience, then there's something in there that you can feel that's in some way inhibiting, blocking, 
covering over that, that, that love that you are, okay? So when you can feel that, okay? So we're, we're kind of doing this step by step. So we think of the trees, we look at the trees, and then we just let ourselves feel into the feeling of that, okay? Oh yeah, I can feel where it's like, yes, it feels really cool, I'm just astounded, and yet I can still feel slight, slight, slight inhibition. What I want you to do is I want you to track, I want you to feel into the inhibition. The part of you that's awake, the part of you that's love, the part of you that is light, I don't need to work, work with that part, you're already that. It's the stuff in the way that inhibits you or blocks you from that which you are. That's what I'm after, okay? So when you think about that and you let yourself feel into the feeling, when you can feel that sense, you can sense those little blockages, you can feel the inhibitions, when you feel into how that makes you feel, what you're doing is you're feeling the sensation of that. You're feeling into that part that doesn't open, the part that is inhibited, the part that is blocked. So you feel into that, and then you let yourself feel how does that make you feel? What does that feel like when you can feel these blocks? Sometimes it can be a feeling of frustration. It can be a feeling of sadness. But if you keep following it and staying with it, you'll go, you're going to start unpeeling and unraveling, and you'll also start to bring forth the subconscious energies that are also blocking and inhibiting. Okay? So when you feel that and you go and you let yourself just feel how that feels, maybe there's disappointment. It doesn't matter what the feeling is. Be with it. Don't try to stop it, not judging it, not making it right or wrong, good or bad, not worrying where it comes from. You're just allowing, allowing so that you can know it. And when you do that, what happens for me is instead of all this static energy, all this energy that's presenting all at once, ah, Oh, there you go. Now I see with some of the energies that are blocking it, and it becomes very, very visible to me. And once it becomes visible, then it becomes accessible, then I can track it and unravel where it's really coming from. So I need your help in order to help release energy, and this is how you do it. You let yourself feel how it makes you feel. And also, just so you know, Things buried in the subconscious, you cannot access with your conscious mind. It's not going to happen. One of the ways to start accessing the subconscious is to stay with a feeling, allow that feeling to be there without judgment, no, no making it go away, but let it be there and you let yourself feel into it. When you do that, see I used to track this way, way, way back when I used to do a lot of clear individual sessions on people at the Renaissance Center and just have them feel into something and the next piece would start to present and all I had to do is give them the next words and they would feel that and once they felt that then the next e energy would present and this was all the subconscious energies that were being unraveled. So when you feel into something and then once you can feel that energy you can literally drop into the next layer that's presenting because you are allowing yourself to just be with it. See, what happens sometimes with people when they do the recycling, you know, you see people going into the, all the emoting and all this emotional uh, energy that people do. I remember way back, people, that was a big thing, you know, emotional, clear, emotional stuff. And people would be doing all this stuff. But the key was, is if you didn't soften and surrender to it, then you were still in the energy, what I call the live conscious energy, rather than the subconscious energy. And the healings cannot go as deep or as clear. But when you start accessing the subconscious by being with an energy and staying with it till something starts to present right underneath that, then you can feel that energy and then you can drop into whatever that feeling is as well. So we want to go, let's see, we want to try and go uh, at least maybe two or three layers into the subconscious, so to speak, so that we can start accessing what the deeper stuff, okay? Now as a reminder, whenever, whatever you hold inside of you, whatever traumas you've lived in this lifetime or any other, you will have other energy inside of you that is not yours. Guaranteed. I don't care who you are, okay? There's only maybe three people on the planet who don't have other entities inside of them. Okay, so 
energies attracts like energy. So whatever wounding you have, whatever, whatever trauma you have, whatever beliefs you have, whatever you have lived, doesn't matter what that is, you're going to have other energy inside of you that is not you, and that energy is going to be contributing to your experience, amplifying your experience. We call these other energies, sometimes it has to do with perpetrator energy. Perpetrator energy is not another conscious being, it is not an entity, it is somebody else's emotional energy lodged inside your body. If you don't take these energies out, you will not be clear of these particular feelings or sensations or blockages of the heart. So you have the perpetrator energy, which is emotional energy of somebody else. You can carry that from other lifetimes. It's not just from this lifetime. It stays with your soul imprint. You can have uh, entities. We call those entities is a nice way of saying dead people. Okay? People who have passed on. They're no longer in, in physical, physical body. Now, and then they also don't go into the light. They stay earthbound because of not going into the light. Doesn't matter why. But what happens is whatever energy you hold, for example, if your cup is red, meaning this is the energy that you hold inside, it might have a lot of trauma, it might have a lot of loss, betrayal, then you're going to find that what comes inside of you is going to have the same frequency. So whatever you're holding, you'll have more and more and more and more of the same coming into your energy field. In order to clean this stuff up, we have to release the, the, the entities from the physical body. You also have interferences other interferences. So there's also what we call implants, energetic implants in the physical body. And these implants are placed inside of you for the purpose of tracking scientific research. You know, it's like it comes from beings that have no sensitivity for the emotional well-being of a human being. They just see you as a, an animal or something, a, you know, a creature that, oh, let's put this wire in here. Oh, plug that wire right there. It'll affect the heart center. Oh, it'll keep that heart center from always being afraid to love fully. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll also make the heart center feel like a state of uh, anxiety the closer love comes. Been experiencing that one? Okay, That's, <clears throat> this is partly why, okay? So these energies, these, these implants, will literally keep you stuck or keep you in a state of mind or a state of, or a way of being that doesn't allow you just to be who you are. It affects you. The other things that we have are we have power, the powers of darkness, dark force interference. And dark force interference comes and happens for many, many, many different reasons, but it affects your well-being and it really does inhibit and block you. Like, for example, hang on a second, somebody over here, who is it? Okay, so somebody's got an interference that has to do with the powers of darkness that does not want this person to open their heart up. And they've actually got energies, darker energies, minion, what I call minions, they're in that, they literally come through that, that thread, that energy that I was referring to earlier, that black line, and they're literally inside that line of, of energy that's coming forth from past lives so there's an interference that's literally trying to make sure that, that you do not open the heart. Okay? It also allow, keeps you from knowing love all the way, keeps you afraid of love, keeps on some level mistrusting love, even though on some level there's going to be a feeling of feeling a lot of love. Do you know what I'm talking about? Okay, so these interferences are affecting and blocking you as well as everybody else. So there's a lot of things that are actually occurring that are keeping humanity stuck in a state of con un uh, unconsciousness that keeps a frequency on the planet at a certain level so that people really are not opening to their divine being. Also, just so you know, the consciousness teachings that we're now delivering were not available to humanity in the past. Okay, that was only for the select few. And now it's available for everyone. Anybody who's asking, anybody who's feeling the call, these, the teachings are now becoming available, which is a good thing. With the interferences, so then we've then also we have your stuff 
brought forth from past life. So in a clearing, we want to work with all different levels. And for me, when I'm doing a, a, a group clearing, I let go of any kind of like, it's got to be a certain way. I think anybody who's been with me knows that. So what I do is I open it up, I let, ask, and we start, the, we start the, the clearing by having you bring things to the forefront, and then it begins. I never know what's going to happen, I never know how it's going to present. All I do is show up and unravel what's being presented, okay? But you're the ones who are showing me. You're the, you're the, the ones that literally expose what's in the way.